All right, we are rolling. We are rolling on this Sunday, November 14th. Yeah. <laughs> and it may be chilly, but we do not have that four lettered S word yet. Although we did have that a few weeks ago. We had a little bit of snow falling down. But I think what they're predicting isn't going to be anything of any consequence. So just, just like an inch, maybe. Anytime. Yeah, that melts in the yeah, afternoon. Yeah. Not a biggie. Nothing you can do about it. Right. Uh -huh. right. Yeah. Dress warmly, right? Yep. Yeah. 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 All right. What's that? Layers. Layers. Yeah. Layers. Yeah. Layers. <laughs> yep. One, two, three, four. Yeah. <laughs> you have your four layers on. Yes, oh, let us stand. She, Go ahead and sing the. I thought, she was, cutting, I thought she was cutting off with the song. Oh, <laughs> one, two, three, four. She got it right. Yeah. And a one, and a two. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and sit and sing. season and I'm actually thankful for that because it shows what people can do when uh, they stop and try to think of others for a while. We are fortunate in this area that we have a bunch of people like that. I could name names but I'd better not. I'm very thankful for them. I asked your blessing on our effort to get together this coming Saturday. Bless that that time. Um, <coughs> I'm asking prayer for a number of people who uh, it would be a minor miracle if they see uh, Christmas at all this year. Um, <laughs> you teach me, Father, to pray, Thy will be done. Comfort me in in doing that. I'm saying it, not only saying it, but believing it. Wanting it. I so want my will and not yours so much of the time. Um, I think of how scared some of the people are that are going through incredibly weird health issues right now. I ask that you give them peace. <clears throat> um, not that any of us can really do anything for them. How we pray for them is going to be between you and us. <laughs> but I'm going to pray that your will be done. In each of the cases I've been thinking about right now. Father, I ask your blessing on our time together this morning, and I ask it in the name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Uh, our first hymn is Just As I Am. <laughs> to, uh, to pull some stuff from Sunday school. I know we do this one quite a lot, but I think it's very appropriate. <laughs>
as I figured. So, and you know what that means. So. <sighs> well, it depends on how you look at it. You know? Maybe well done, good and faithful servant, you know? Maybe. Yeah, you get home and you hear, you hear that, and maybe that's really good. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. It's, uh, how we how we approach death, and you know, as Captain Kirk famously said in the Wrath of Khan, how we look at death is at least as important as how we look at life. So, um, Jesus knew death, <laughs> and still, still he was praying, you know, in the garden. If I don't have to, that that would be great. <laughs> I don't, and if Jesus can do that, I, you know, we can't blame each other for being a little bit fearful about it. Missy has been working very hard for our Lord and for the people that she loves, and there's going to be uh, a lot of missing. But, well, I mean, we can't be here forever. So, and we went and saw the old feet because you never know when Billy Payne might pass away or for attack. So now was the time when we went. We had a great time. Now is the time. That's that's what it's all about. Now is the time. The gospel is about now, not later. <laughs> later is dessert. Now is the meal that will feed you, give you nutrients to do the job. Desserts a reward. Um, I'm going to be in the book of Luke. You can, you can go wherever you'd like to. <laughs> It'll be confusing, though. And, uh, I, I really enjoy Luke because it's, he's, he's modern. He, he writes his gospel very modern. He doesn't tend to slip into the prophetic quite as often as the other writers did. So, uh, and that would happen from time to time in the New Testament. They'd be speechifying, and then somebody would dip into the prophecy, kind of, and, and echoing back to Jewish history. Not that uh, Luke wouldn't do the same sometimes, but, because, I mean, the Spirit was leading the writers, and um, but they weren't dictating. They were... Uh, they were being in the spirit as, as they were recording this in whatever way they managed to get it recorded. Um, and there's all kinds of arguments about that. And I don't care. <laughs> it, got recorded. it got recorded. See, isn't that ironic? Huh? Okay. You want me to tell you the story about Dixie Chicken? That's an ironic story. It's wonderful. <coughs> anyway. Especially the end. I'm thinking of what the guy looked like at the end of the bar in that song. He's like, ah. <laughs> ha! Imagine that. Luke is bringing us uh, a chronological time, or a chronological timetable, as best as he can, of what Jesus was doing one day after another. Now, you're, you're going to see, we went over this, that centurion who had the uh, beloved servant who was sick unto death that Jesus healed without even showing up at the house. He kind of hung out in the garage or the driveway, and the guy goes, "No, you don't even need to come in the house." You know, I, I, I had not found so uh, so great a faith in all of Israel. The imp. Now we look at that verse, right? And I think we don't give it the heft that we maybe ought to. How many people are Jesus, is Jesus talking about there? How big a place is he talking about when he says that? Several hundred thousand. <laughs> At least. I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Everybody's looking for what chapter and verse you're in. Chapter 7, thank you. I'm sorry about that. I, that was a brain dead moment. You just said Luke, so we were in Luke. Right? We were in Luke. With anticipation. With anticipation. Mm. A patient. Yes. <laughs> mm. Rocky. 
see. Luke chapter 7. And I'm in verse 9. You can start with you want. <laughs> We've gone over this and it's it's amazing, but in Luke chapter 7, verse 9, Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him, and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Not a good sign at this time. The people that heard Jesus say that, what do they think? Now, apparently there's a bunch of people following Jesus around when this stuff is happening. Okay, that's kind of weird to begin with, right? But you have to understand these prophets were kind of like their entertainment. <laughs> you know? It was, oh, well, here's this guy and he's following this stuff. Let's go, let's go follow him, see what he's gonna do. Right? So they're getting the idea that here's this great healer. In fact, he's getting trouble for healing people on the wrong days of the week. Right? He's uh He's kind of ticking some people off. In fact, people are already planning to try to kill him. So he's, he's, he's making waves. So he's got some people following him around. He's got some notoriety going on. Even though he occasionally tells somebody, you know, don't tell them what, what I did. They usually turn right around and tell everybody. <laughs> right? I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. Well, what about the guys that are following him? I mean, truly following, wanting him to teach them, wanting to learn from him, have seen some of these things. What about some of the, the temple cops that are kind of changing their mind about this guy and going, wait a minute, he's not bad at all. In fact, you know, he's, he's what we've been promised, I think. You know, from... Sunday school class in temple, <laughs> right guys? Because you ladies, you didn't know unless the guys told you. <clears throat> this, could this be Messiah? Really? I mean, with all the prophets we got walking around town, could this really be the one? Huh, so you got people doing that. What does is, what is Jesus say? I've not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. I don't all of it. That's got to hurt. Doesn't it? I mean, we look at that phrase and we go, yeah, yeah, oh, okay. But you don't dive into it. <laughs> what is he talking about? How would you like to be, how would you like to hear that after following this guy for four months, let's say? Keeping tabs on him as much as you can on Facebook. Where's Jesus now? have that, obviously, but how would you feel? You've been doing everything you think is right. You'd be angry, I think. I'd be really angry. <laughs> what are you talking about, no pain? I'd have slapped you. Right? They that were sent, returning to the house, verse 10, found the servant whole that had been sick. Huh, wow, proof. This guy didn't even have to show up at the house. But the centurion knew, right? Sister Amy and I were discussing that he, his, his level of humility, and I was discussing with her the level of pragmatism the man had. This guy knew, he just knew. No, you don't even have to come in the house. <laughs> you just say the word and it's done. Verse 11, it came to pass the day after that he went, okay, now Luke is telling us, telling us the day after this, all right? <clears throat> the day after, so if you're looking at the, at the comparing Matthew and Luke, Matthew's going to go diving off in a whole other time realm, right? 
Luke is telling you this is happening the day after that day. So this is, let's say it's Wednesday. <laughs> Came to pass that day after that he went to a city called Nain, or Na Na Nain, and many of his disciples went with him. And much people. All right. Many of his disciples, there were more than just the 12. All right, we've got to clear that up, first of all. We have no idea how many of them went. Three, 40, no idea. And a bunch of other people went with them. They, can you imagine this? People traveling to follow this guy. After he said, I've not found such faith in all of Israel. Now, how does that hit you? I want to do better. <laughs> Somebody's apparently listening to what he's saying and mulling it over as opposed to reading it and ignoring it. Mm -hmm. Or thinking, oh, that's nice. It's in red letter. Cool. And moving on. When Jesus said that, somebody was like angry and then hurt. And then maybe they thought about it for a little bit. And the day after, they decided to get up and follow him again. That, I think, is really important. Mm -hmm. And it's written such that we don't pay any attention to that. You've been following Jesus for four months, faithfully, doing what he's been telling you, listening to him, trying to figure out what he's been saying, and then he says, this Roman centurion has more faith than you do. I mean, come on, we're human. That's how we're going to take it. Mm -hmm. We're not going to go, Yep, that's right. <laughs> All right. Really? Are you? Anybody here going to react to that? You're absolutely right, Jesus. You sure got faith. You know, we have a tendency to go, hey, what about me, yo-yo? I've been with you for four months. <laughs> I'm out of here. I'm, I'm so done with him. <laughs> right? You can see, you know, one of the disciples on Facebook I'm so done with Jesus, you just said that I was gonna didn't have faith. <laughs> Pat it. Talk to the hand, Jay. <laughs> so the next day he goes into another place and people are following him. A lot of disciples and people are following him. Much people. Now, when he came nigh to the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. So you've got these two groups coming together, okay? You got the funeral party and the Jesus group. When the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her and said unto her, Weep not. And he came and touched the open casket, whatever it was that they had him in on. Where were they carrying him? To the grave, isn't it? Yeah, well, I mean, we don't know where in particular he's going to get buried. And this is back in the day when they didn't bury them all that deep. And this usually, they, you know, depending on how many how much money the person had, <clears throat> they could buy a place to get buried or not. Or sometimes they just dump them out in the, <laughs> the garbage pile out by the city, which happened a lot. Mozart was killed that way. I mean, he was buried that way in a poor man's tomb. Basically, in a big bunch of other dead people, you throw a little lime on top of it, and that's it. Have no idea about this guy, if this guy was rich or not. I have no idea about the funeral procession, what he's being carried on. It could simply just be a board. Whatever it was that he was carried in or on, Jesus touched it. And they that bear him stood still. And Jesus said, Young man, I say unto you, Arise. And he that was dead sat up and began to speak. Wouldn't you love to know what he was saying? <laughs> <laughs> Holy crap, I 
thought I was dead. <laughs> or, what? Oh, I never want to go through that again. <laughs> right? That was terrible. <laughs> I need to see a doctor, maybe. I don't know. You know what? I wonder what the man was saying. He that was dead sat up and began to speak, and he delivered him to his mother. Jesus delivered the man to his mother. <clears throat> there came a fear on all. Or, does anybody have a different word in their translation other than fear? Waking. Um, filled with awe. Awe, yeah. <laughs> you don't see this every day. <laughs> Right? Most of them say fear. Yeah. But it's fear and they began glorifying God. Right. Yes. And they glorified God saying that a great prophet has risen up among us and that God hath visited his people. <laughs> now that's interesting. That interests me because, again, these are regular people, right? You've got these two groups coming together. This man is obviously apparently dead. They're going to bury him. Apparently they, you know, don't they prepare the dead? You know, what's that awful taste in my mouth? What, <laughs> what, did, you, what did you feed me? What did you, right? We don't know if these are... Hebrews, Jews or not, that are coming out of this city, right? So they may have not prepared the body the way you would normally prepare a body to be buried. We know nothing about it. We just know that Jesus said, I say unto you, get up. And the man did and began speaking. And Jesus brought him to his mom. And people were going, wow. That is amazing. God is visiting us. Now apparently, there's a number of really religious people there, right? There came a fear on all, and they glorified God, saying that a great prophet has risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. Let me ask you a question. Does that make sense to you? Think of the last funeral you were at, and somebody goes up to the casket, cracks it back open, and says, get out of the casket, Bill. And Bill gets up out of the casket. What's your first thought? I need to change my pants. Because <laughs> I just, you know, soiled myself. As long as there's no old folks in the audience, and you know, in the funeral hall, the, Okay, you guys are okay? No, no coronary set? All right. Well, that's right, speechless. Yeah. Absolutely speechless. The difference is, Jesus isn't at Bill's funeral, wherever it's taking place. He's here. So who else is there? Who's hovering around Jesus? The Holy Spirit. Who gave him the power to raise his dead person to begin with? The Father. The Holy Spirit. Jesus was made of perfect, sinless flesh, was he not? Didn't we just say that when he was in the garden, he was kind of hoping that he didn't have to die. He was kind of afraid of it like we get about death. Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why did he pray what he prayed in the garden if he wasn't just a little tiny bit afraid? Because he had this garbage all over him. He was poured into it. This stuff that works against God all the time. The Spirit gives him the power to do what? Was Jesus dead when he went to hell? Yes. We got one yes. Anybody else? Yes, yes. Anybody say no? 
This is important. It's vital to dive and into the spirit, words that are here. Spirit never dies. Spirit raised Jesus from the dead. The Spirit empowered Jesus to do these miracles. The Spirit is there. The people are seeing that. They're getting a little bit of Spirit activity. They know. They're enlightened a little bit as to who to give the thank you to. God did this. We've been visited by God. They didn't say, what did that guy just do? They said, God has given us a prophet. I'm not seeing a bunch of people walk up to Jesus and go, that was outstanding. Could you do it again? Like a normal person might do. Jesus, I'm out of here. <laughs> right? I can't, my brain can't comprehend it. What I just saw, I can do. It doesn't happen all the time. <clears throat> Not even on TV. Right? There came a fear on all. They glorified God, saying that a great prophet is risen up among us, and that God has visited his people. And this rumor of him went forth throughout all Judea and throughout all the region round about, and the disciples of John showed him of all these things. They told John, they talked to him about it, John the Baptist. And John's going, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> John, calling on to him, two of his disciples, said, to, sent them to Jesus, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? Are you the one who we are waiting for, or do we have to look for another? I like that. That's pretty cut and dry. John is kind of like, do we have to waste our time with you or not? <laughs> right? <clears throat> so, when these two men were coming to him, verse 20, they said, John Baptist hath sent us unto thee, saying, Art thou he that should come, or look we for another? And in that same hour he cured many of the infir their infirmities and plagues and of evil spirits, and unto many that were blind he gave sight. And Jesus answering these two said unto them, Go your way and tell John what things you have seen and heard. How that the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised, to the poor the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. And that's a weird way to close that statement, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. You expect Jesus to say one thing and he turns around and says something totally different. Yeah. Totally unexpected. All right. The list that he's given. The blind see. That's pretty huge. That's great. That's a healing thing. The lame walk. Again, that's really great. The lepers are cleansed. That's different. Because who cleanses lepers? In these days, in the days of Jesus, who cleanses lepers? The priest. The priest. Well, you're right, it's God that cleanses the lepers, but who's overseeing the whole bit? The priest. Priests. You've got leprosy, you go see a priest. And they tell you what to do, and you do it, and then you come back, and they look at you, they look you over, and they say if you're cured or not. You go out of the city for, what, two weeks or something like that? Or then you come back in, and they go, no, you don't, you don't have leprosy anymore. It's mine. That's different. Did the priest heal lame people or blind people prior to this? No. Ooh. This is covered in Moses' law about what to do with leprosy. So this is gargantuanly different. It's in this list that Jesus says, but the followers of John are going to know 
priest, prophet. And they're going to tie those two together and they're going to try to understand that. That's going to mean more to them than just, you know, we're, we're healing these physical ailments. The lepers are cleansed. The deaf hear. The dead are raised. Who does that? Nobody. <laughs> and to the poor, the gospel is preached. What gospel? You're, you're working with John, right? What gospel is he talking about? Nothing that people know already. The kingdom. And he, the kingdom of heaven is here. The kingdom of heaven is here now. Are you him that we're looking for, or do we continue to look for somebody else? And Jesus answers, neither yes nor no, does he? <laughs> but he says, well, here's what I've done. <laughs> here's what we are doing, right? <clears throat> the blind see, the lame walk, the lepers are cleansed, the deaf hear, the dead are raised. To the poor, the gospel is preached. And blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Why would he say that? One who does not lose his faith in me. What just happened? What did he just say to a bunch of people? I have not found so great a faith in all of Israel. He honked off a lot of people. But they decided to follow him anyway, and he was this. I believe this was Jesus' way of giving them an attaboy. You continued to follow me, even though I made you angry at what I said yesterday. You weren't offended because of what I said. See, this was the day after. This is why I love Luke. <laughs> this ties in to what happened yesterday. And people in the crowd are going, oh. Cool, all right. <laughs> he likes us again, cool. <laughs> We're on his good side now. Ah, didn't you love in school getting an attaboy from the teacher? Didn't you like that? Hey, you did really good. Thanks. I'm gonna do better next time too. Because I like how that feels when you say I did a good job. I like that, that's cool. Blessed is he whosoever shall not be offended in me. Who's got a different translation of that phrase? Who keeps from stumbling over me. Who keeps from stumbling over me. In other words, get ready. I'm going to say a bunch of stuff you guys aren't going to like, but if you continue to follow me, you're going to do well, and you're going to be blessed. Because look at all the stuff I've done to prove to you the kingdom's here. And what does John the Baptist have to do with it? Okay. He's telling the two guys that John the Baptist sent to Jesus, go tell John this. When the messengers of John, verse 24, were departed, he began to speak unto the people concerning John. What went you out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken by the wind? Now, He's talking about John here, apparently, according to Luke. And a bunch of people went out to hear this other prophet, I guess, right? This one who was saying, prepare the way to the Lord. Repent, for the Lord comes nigh. The kingdom is here, is coming. That was John's job. And a bunch of people heard that, and a bunch of people paid attention to it. Right? But when they went, where did John, where was John's headquarters? Did you go to Washington Avenue and look, okay, Baptist John, here he is, and knock on his office door and say, hi, can I have an appointment to see John, please? <laughs> yes. At this point, was he not in prison? Huh? At this point, was he not in prison? John? Yeah, I think so. But to the people that went out to see him prior. Ah, the Jordan. Huh? At the Jordan River. The Jordan and other places where, where John would, 
right people would actively go out to seek john out right this was difficult going to see john the baptist because i'm saying he didn't have a good you couldn't just email him it wasn't you know where did john live wilderness well wherever he wanted to <laughs> somewhere kind of near the jordan yeah how did he dress if dressed he was <laughs> what did he eat do we know yes but this was this man was crazy he ate bugs and honey right yeah. sometimes he'd show up and all he had on was a bunch of leaves and stuff twigs animal skins animal skins sometimes with the little nose and the little eyes still on it <laughs> he was gross who did you go to see? What were you looking for when you went to see this John the Baptist, guys? Jesus is asking. Mm -hmm. Why did you go see John? What, what prompted you to go see him? What went you out into the wilderness for to see? A reed shaken with the wind? You know, you're, you just decided to go for a walk? What? What'd you go? And now Jesus is talking to these people because he knows a number of them have done this. They've gone to see John, the Baptist. But what went you out for to see? A man clothed in soft raiment? Behold, they which are gorgeously apparelled and live delicately are in king's courts. So you weren't going out to the wilderness to look for somebody in nice clothes. You went out to look for John. Why? Why did you? Curiosity. Some, I'm sure, was curious. They hear some repent. What are you talking about? Repent. Why do I have to repent? Something's bothering you, or else you wouldn't be asking me. Why you have to repent is because you know something better is coming. The kingdom of God is coming. If you know God, you know that you're not acting the way you should. You're not doing the stuff you're supposed to be doing. And yes, I know there's an awful lot of people in the churches and everything that are swaying you. What did you go to see John for in the first place? To see a reed swayed by the wind? Somebody that didn't know what they were talking about? Somebody to give you a different opinion? Is that what you went for? Did you go to see somebody dressed nice, clean, so that you could find what they have to say acceptable? Do they look sharp? Does his words touch you? Whatever kind of clothing he was wearing or not clothing? Did what he say mean something to you? What did you go out to see? Why did you go? Prophets. Prophets. Oh, okay. John is a prophet. I heard John is a prophet. I'm going to go check out what he's got to say. Why? Because life sucks and I want it better. <laughs> Perfectly good answer. Are you going to do what the prophet says? I don't know. Okay, another perfectly good answer. But at least you're giving this John guy a shot. See what he says. What, verse 26, went you out for to see? A prophet? Yes, I say unto you, and much more than a prophet. This is he of whom it is written, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. So Jesus is talking about John, but by talking about John in that precise way, he's talking about, guess who? Jesus. And the one he brings that gives him the power to do what he's doing. Amazing stuff. The kingdom indeed is here. I'm the guy. I say unto you, among those that are born of women, that there is not a greater prophet than John the Baptist, but he that is least in the kingdom of God is greater than he. Well, no. Jesus, I just forgave you for yesterday. And I'm going to have to forgive you for this, because there's a lot of prophets that are much better than that crazy man in the wilderness. Jesus is saying, no, there's not. But here, the kingdom 
to make you even greater than him. Brains go pop and fly out the top of heads at this point. All the people that heard him, the publicans, justify God being baptized with the baptism of John. But the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. What does that mean? And what is this all getting to? What is it pointing to? They didn't understand. Any questions? <laughs> yeah. well, Nothing the but! <laughs> yeah, the Pharisees didn't understand. They were like trying to get it, but they <coughs> really didn't understand what was going on with this. It wasn't just the Pharisees, though. I think it's like the story that Jesus told about the... Was it, a, it was a tax collector and a Pharisee that were praying. And the man, the, the tax collector says, God have mercy on me. And the Pharisee says, Lord, I thank you, God, that you didn't make me like other people, especially like a tax collector. Yes. So the tax collector went away forgiven, not the Pharisee, because he recognized that he had wrong stuff in his life. So that's where the people who went out to hear John, they recognized that they had wrong stuff in their life, and were going to turn from it. What do you, the Pharisees were all self-righteous. What do you go to counseling for? When, you, when, you, when you're seeking some help, right? And you might not even know what kind of help to get. And you might be very confused about what type of help you should try to see. What were these people's lives like? What was wrong? Why did they go to look to what to see what John the Baptist had to say? Why wouldn't they? Sometimes simply they knew something Trip getting the job. No, it was not. That's what I was saying. He, he didn't just have an office on Washington Ave. You couldn't make an appointment with the guy. You went to where you thought he might be, and he was either there or he wasn't. So you went to look for him. And if you found him, you did some work doing that. Why? Because you want some help. Something's wrong, and you're looking to see what this guy has to offer. Whether that's clear to you when you go or not, that's a different story. But something's not right. Correct? Yeah. You go to the walk-in, you're not feeling right. You know what's wrong? No. But something's not right. Or you get you call the doctor. And then something's not right. Well, what's wrong? Well, I, I'm really not even sure. Something's off. Your light is off. What does this prophet have to say? Hmm. Maybe they can give me some advice. Maybe they can tell me what's wrong. Jesus is giving them three, you know, did you go out looking to see a reed shaking with the wind? No. <laughs> did you go out expecting to see a man in really nice clothes? No. Did you go out for a prophet? Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Why? Ah, see, this is the kernel of what his speaking is about. Now, he just apologized for saying, I have not found such great, you know, great faith in all of Israel. And he said, blessed are you if you didn't really, you know, take that to heart and decided to follow me again today and see this wonderful stuff. And John... A lot of you went out to see John, too. What do you think now? What do you think now? You know, 
I'll tell you something else. John is the greatest prophet there ever was. <laughs> what about the other guys that we really, really like? He was he's the greatest prophet. You know what else? You can be even greater than him. You're crazy, Jesus. <laughs> what? All the people that heard him, publicans justified God being baptized with the baptism of John, but the Pharisees and lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves, being not baptized of him. The Lord said, Whereunto then shall I liken the men of this generation, and to what are they like? Well, they're like children sitting. Uh, uh, ah, they're like children sitting in the marketplace and calling one to another and saying, We have piped unto you, and you have not danced. We have mourned to you, and you have not wept. <laughs> I love this one. Jesus says, for John the Baptist, and Jesus continues in verse 33, for John the Baptist came neither eating bread nor drinking wine, and you say, he has a devil. And the Son of Man has come eating and drinking, and you say, behold, a gluttonous man and a wine biter, a friend of publicans and sinners. But wisdom is justified of all their children. That's coming up next. That's coming up next. Why would Jesus say all that? We've been playing our flutes for you. We've been playing jigs and reels and all kinds of wonderful Celtic stuff, and none of you are dancing. We've been mourning with you, and you're, you're not crying. Don't you feel anything? What's going on? Why did you go seeking a prophet in the first place? Jesus is asking that. But he doesn't know, right? <laughs> you came seeking a prophet. That's why you want. Why are you here? To hear God's word? Because you're supposed to because it's Sunday? Because you got an hour to kill. <laughs> Why are you here? Mm -hmm. Heavenly Father, why are we here? Why do we look to your word in the first place? Why don't we dive into it and swim around in it like we ought to? How come we can't get enjoyment and the fun out of some of the stuff that you say? Because some of it, Lord, is absolutely fun. Ironic, I love it. Some of it is mean to us. And some of it, Lord, I absolutely disagree with. I think you're wrong. But the kingdom is here to help correct me. And I thank you so for that. I think of the people that are ill, that I'm praying for. I don't want any of them to go. That's being selfish because that means they won't get to be in glory with you. And free of pain, and free of limitation. How horribly selfish of me that is to not want that for them. That's why I strongly believe, Father, that I should deny myself more and more and pray that your will be done in each case and not mine. Because when you were here in the body of your son, Jesus, you healed people of all kinds of problems, including mass stupidity and selfishness. You made us see, you allowed us to hear you allowed us to dance when the pipers were playing. You allowed us the freedom to cry when mourning. You allowed us the freedom to feel. And to have the heart of your son to be gracious, to be forgiving, to be strong in it. To be humble and understand that that's the greatest strength there is. Especially because it's yours. Why are we here? 
lot of answers to that but mainly to do what you want me to do amen to be continued dun, dun, dun. watch next week no boat here <laughs> that stuff's crazy <coughs> can you just give a simple gospel message yes Jesus came to earth as a baby, lived 33 sinless years, died on the cross for your sins, went to hell, and rose again from the dead so that you could have life with him, everlasting, period. But there's a lot more to the story than that. And if you make it that simple, you're missing something. Because the picture of heaven, well, really nice, doesn't necessarily tell you what you got to do today at 1215. <laughs> what could you hear now, right? <laughs> yes, you may stand if you wish. It's number 435. I love to tell the story.
Brother David Stewart, would you please close us in prayer? Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you for the explanation of your word. We pray, Lord, that you would follow, we would follow in the direction that Jesus was telling us to. In Christ's precious name, amen. 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 Love you all. Thanks for bearing with it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, tired. Yeah.